The world economy feels shaky right now. Prices are soaring everywhere you look. This stubborn inflation is making it tough for people to afford everyday stuff. Central banks around the world are raising interest rates to try to get inflation under control. However, these rate hikes are making it more expensive for businesses to borrow money, which could slow down economic growth. There's a lot of talk among experts about whether these factors will push major economies into a recession. Some economists believe a recession is just around the corner, while others think it's still a while off. This uncertainty makes it difficult for businesses and investors to plan. They're trying to figure out how to protect themselves if the economy takes a turn for the worse. In these uncertain times, it's more important than ever to understand what a recession is and how it could affect you. Let's take a closer look at recessions and what might be in store for the global economy. The R word, recession, is on everyone's minds. It's a scary word that brings to mind job losses, falling stock prices, and economic hardship. But what exactly is a recession? Simply put, a recession is a period of significant decline in economic activity. It's like the economy catching a cold, but instead of a runny nose and cough, it experiences shrinking businesses, fewer jobs, and less spending. Economists officially define a recession as two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth. This means the economy is shrinking for at least six months straight. Think of it as the economy going in reverse instead of moving forward. All right? While this technical definition is helpful, it doesn't always tell the whole story. Sometimes, other factors like job losses and consumer spending are considered when determining if a recession is truly underway. Nobody has a crystal ball to predict the future with 100% certainty. However, there are signs and signals that economists look at to get a sense of where the economy might be headed. These signs, known as economic indicators, can give us clues about whether a recession is becoming more or less likely. Think of them as the economy's vital signs, like a doctor checking your temperature and blood pressure. By monitoring these indicators, we can get a better understanding of the risks facing the economy and make more informed decisions about our finances. It's like checking the weather forecast before leaving the house. It helps you prepare for what might lie ahead. In the next section, we'll delve deeper into some of these key economic indicators and what they're telling us about the potential for a recession. Understanding these indicators can empower you to navigate the economic landscape and make smart choices for your financial well-being. Let's dive deeper into what a recession really means. Imagine the economy as a bustling marketplace. A recession is like a sudden chill in the air, making people hesitant to spend money. Businesses might see their sales drop, forcing them to cut costs, which could mean laying off employees. This slowdown can become a vicious cycle with each negative event feeding into the next. The two-quarter rule. Economists have a specific way of defining a recession. Two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. GDP, or gross domestic product, is a measure of all the goods and services produced within a country's borders. Think of it as the total value of everything a country produces. When GDP is growing, the economy is expanding and businesses are thriving. However, when GDP shrinks for two consecutive quarters, it's a red flag that the economy is contracting and a recession might be underway. This two-quarter rule provides a clear benchmark for identifying a recession. It's like a thermometer telling us that the economy has a fever. However, it's important to remember that this is just one indicator and other factors are also considered. Just like a doctor considers more than just your temperature when diagnosing an illness, economists look at a range of economic data to determine if a recession is truly occurring. These additional factors help paint a more complete picture of the economy's health. Beyond the numbers, the NBER's role. While the two-quarter rule is a helpful guideline, it's not the only factor determining a recession. In the United States, the official arbiter of recessions is the National Bureau of Economic Research, or NBER, a group of economists who analyze various economic data. The NBER takes a broader approach than simply looking at GDP. They consider factors like employment, industrial production, 
and consumer spending to determine if the economy is experiencing a significant decline in activity. Think of the NBER as economic detectives, carefully examining all the clues to determine if a recession is truly underway. Their pronouncements carry weight as they are considered the definitive authority on recessions in the United States. While the NBER's role is crucial in officially declaring a recession, it's important to remember that their announcements often lag behind the actual start of a recession. They wait for enough data to confirm their assessment, meaning a recession could be underway before it's officially declared. Section 4. Real-World Impacts of a Recession Beyond the technical definitions and economic jargon, recessions have real-world consequences for people and businesses. During a recession, businesses might struggle to stay afloat, leading to job losses and reduced consumer spending. Imagine a local restaurant forced to close its doors because fewer people are dining out due to economic uncertainty. This closure not only impacts the restaurant owner but also the employees who depend on those jobs. This ripple effect can be felt throughout the economy as reduced spending in one area leads to slowdowns in others. As people tighten their belts, businesses that rely on discretionary spending like travel and entertainment might feel the pinch. Understanding the potential impacts of a recession on different sectors and industries can help individuals and businesses make informed decisions to navigate these challenging economic times. Imagine a racetrack where short-distance runners finish faster than long-distance runners. Normally, short-term bonds offer lower returns than long-term bonds. This is shown by the yield curve. But when investors get nervous, they pour money into long-term bonds. This can cause long-term yields to fall below short-term yields, inverting the yield curve. An inverted yield curve often precedes recessions, like a canary in a coal mine. It's the bond market whispering, something's not right. Now, let's imagine a team of economic forecasters trying to predict not just if a recession is coming, but also how bad it might be. The Duncan Leading Index is like their secret weapon, using a combination of economic data points to estimate the potential severity of a recession. This index looks at things like building permits, manufacturing orders, and consumer expectations to get a sense of the economy's momentum. When these indicators start flashing red, it suggests that the economy might be heading for a rough patch. The Duncan Leading Index is helpful because it provides a more nuanced view than simply looking at GDP growth. It can give us a sense of whether a potential recession might be mild, like a passing shower, or more severe, like a full-blown storm. However, it's important to remember that even the most sophisticated economic models are not perfect. The economy is a complex system, and unexpected events can always throw a wrench into the works. Imagine tracking a moving target in real time. Economists use the SOM rule, a real-time indicator using unemployment data to identify recessions. It focuses on changes in the unemployment rate, which rises sharply during downturns. When the three-month moving average rises above its low point, it triggers a SOM recession signal. The SOM rule provides a timely recession indication compared to official GDP data. It's like a smoke detector alerting you to a fire as soon as it starts. However, the SOM rule has limitations. Unemployment rate fluctuations can cause false signals. Beyond the headlines, real-time data. In today's digital age, economists have access to a treasure trove of real-time data that goes beyond traditional economic indicators. This data, often referred to as alternative data, can provide valuable insights into the health of the economy. Imagine tracking foot traffic at shopping malls, online job postings, or even restaurant reservations. These seemingly mundane data points can offer clues about consumer behavior, business activity, and overall economic sentiment. By analyzing this real-time data, economists can get a more granular and up-to-date picture of the economy than traditional indicators might provide. It's like having a live feed from the economy rather than just snapshots from the past. While real-time data can be incredibly valuable, it's important to use it cautiously. This data is often noisy and requires sophisticated analysis to separate signal from noise.
connecting the dots. A holistic view. Just like a detective piecing together clues to solve a case, economists consider a wide range of indicators to assess the likelihood and potential severity of a recession. No single indicator tells the whole story, so it's crucial to look at the bigger picture. By combining insights from traditional indicators like the yield curve and the Duncan Leading Index with real-time data and expert analysis, economists can develop a more comprehensive understanding of the economic landscape. This holistic approach helps to identify potential risks, anticipate turning points in the economic cycle, and make more informed decisions about the future. It's about connecting the dots to see the bigger picture. Understanding these forecasting tools and their limitations is essential for navigating the uncertainties of the economic world. By staying informed and being prepared, we can weather economic storms and position ourselves for future growth. The Shadow of 2008 Whenever the R word is mentioned, it's hard not to think about the Great Recession of 2008. That economic earthquake shook the world, causing widespread job losses, home foreclosures, and financial turmoil. It left many people feeling anxious about the future. The 2008 recession was triggered by a perfect storm of factors, including a housing bubble, excessive risk-taking in the financial system, and lax lending practices. When the bubble burst, it set off a chain reaction that reverberated throughout the global economy. The memory of 2008 still looms large in the minds of many investors and policymakers. It serves as a stark reminder of how quickly economic fortunes can change and the devastating consequences that can unfold when vulnerabilities are left unchecked. As we face the possibility of a new recession, it's natural to draw comparisons to 2008 and wonder if we're headed for a similar crisis. However, it's important to remember that every recession is unique and the economic landscape has changed significantly since then. While there are some similarities between the current economic environment and the lead-up to 2008, such as rising interest rates and inflation, there are also crucial differences. The global economy has learned some valuable lessons from the last crisis and has taken steps to strengthen its resilience. For example, banks are now subject to stricter regulations and have increased their capital reserves, making them better equipped to withstand financial shocks. Households and corporations have also learned from the past, reducing their debt levels and becoming more cautious with their spending. These factors suggest that the next recession, if it occurs, might be milder than the 2008 crisis. The economy is starting from a stronger foundation and policymakers have more tools at their disposal to mitigate the impact of a downturn. However, it's important not to become complacent. New vulnerabilities have emerged since 2008, and the global economy is facing a complex set of challenges, including geopolitical tensions, supply chain disruptions, and the ongoing climate crisis. While the economy might be more resilient than in 2008, high debt in sectors like commercial real estate and emerging markets remains a concern. Rising interest rates could make debt servicing difficult, leading to defaults, this could trigger a domino effect, spreading financial instability. Central banks must balance taming inflation without causing a deep recession. Governments face high debt and political gridlock, limiting crisis response. The next recession might not be like 2008, but it could still be painful. While we cannot predict the future with certainty, we can learn from the past and take steps to prepare for whatever lies ahead. Understanding the factors that contribute to recessions, monitoring economic indicators, and diversifying our investments can help us navigate uncertain times. Just like a ship's captain prepares for a storm by checking the weather forecast, reinforcing the hull, and adjusting the sails, we can prepare for economic downturns by strengthening our financial foundations, reducing our debt, and having a plan in place. Recessions are a natural part of the economic cycle, like periods of rest and renewal. While they can be challenging, they also present opportunities for innovation, growth, and positive change. By staying informed, being proactive, and focusing on long-term goals, we can weather economic storms and emerge stronger on the other side. Remember, the economy is dynamic, 
and periods of contraction are often followed by periods of expansion. Imagine a storm hitting a coastline. Some areas might experience the full brunt of the wind and waves, while others remain relatively sheltered. Similarly, during a recession, different industries feel the impact to varying degrees. Industries that rely heavily on consumer spending, like retail, restaurants, and travel, are often the first to feel the pinch. When people tighten their belts, they tend to cut back on discretionary expenses like vacations, new clothes, and dining out. Manufacturing and construction are also vulnerable during recessions, as businesses might postpone investments in new equipment and projects. Think of a factory putting expansion plans on hold or a real estate developer delaying the construction of a new office building. On the other hand, some industries might weather the storm relatively well. Healthcare, for example, is considered a more recession-resistant sector, as people still need medical care even during economic downturns. Essential services like utilities and telecommunications also tend to be less affected. The stock market is like a vast ocean, with waves of optimism and pessimism constantly ebbing and flowing. During a recession, those waves can become choppy and unpredictable, making it challenging to navigate for investors. Stock prices are influenced by a complex interplay of factors, including company earnings, interest rates, investor sentiment, and overall economic conditions. During a recession, corporate profits often decline as consumer spending weakens, which can put downward pressure on stock prices. However, not all stocks are created equal. Some companies, like those in defensive industries like healthcare and consumer staples, might fare better during a recession. These companies provide essential goods and services that people continue to need even when times are tough. Investors often shift their focus to these more defensive sectors during recessions, seeking stability and potential for growth even as the broader market declines. It's like seeking shelter in a safe harbor as the storm rages around you. While stocks can be volatile during recessions, other asset classes might offer a smoother ride or even potential for growth. Bonds, for example, are often seen as a safe haven during economic downturns. When investors get nervous about the stock market, they might shift their money into bonds, which are considered less risky. This increased demand can drive up bond prices, potentially offsetting losses in other parts of a portfolio. Commodities, such as gold and oil, can also behave differently during recessions. Gold is often seen as a hedge against inflation, which can rise during economic downturns. Oil prices, however, can be more unpredictable, depending on factors like global demand and supply chain disruptions. Cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, are a relatively new asset class and their behavior during a recession is still uncertain. Some investors believe cryptocurrencies could act as a hedge against inflation or a store of value during economic turmoil, while others are more cautious. Navigating Uncertainty Charting your course in choppy waters. Just as a ship's captain relies on charts, compasses, and weather reports to navigate treacherous waters, investors can rely on a combination of knowledge, strategy, and diversification to navigate the uncertainties of a recession. Understanding how different asset classes tend to perform during recessions, diversifying your portfolio across various investments, and staying informed about economic conditions can help you make more informed decisions. It's also crucial to remember that recessions are a natural part of the economic cycle. While they can be challenging in the short term, they often create opportunities for long-term growth. By staying focused on your financial goals, Remaining disciplined with your investment strategy and seeking professional advice when needed, you can weather economic storms and emerge stronger on the other side. The global economy is sailing through choppy waters with the threat of a recession looming large. Understanding the forces at play and preparing for different scenarios is crucial. Recessions are a natural part of the economic cycle, like periods of ebb and flow in the tide. They also present opportunities for growth and renewal. By taking proactive steps to strengthen our financial foundations, we can navigate these uncertain times with greater confidence, reducing debt and ensuring we have a cushion to weather potential income disruptions. 
Diversifying income streams and living within our means are essential strategies. By taking these proactive steps, we can face the future with greater resilience and peace of mind. Just as a seasoned sailor adjusts the sails and charts a course to navigate stormy seas, investors can take strategic steps to protect and even grow their portfolios during a recession. Diversification, a cornerstone of prudent investing, becomes even more critical during times of economic uncertainty. Spreading your investments across different asset classes, such as stocks, bonds, and commodities, can help mitigate losses and potentially capitalize on opportunities that arise during a downturn. Remember, not all assets move in the same direction, and some might even thrive during a recession. Consider revisiting your investment strategy and risk tolerance. During a recession, it might be prudent to shift a portion of your portfolio towards more defensive assets, such as high-quality bonds or dividend-paying stocks, which tend to hold their value better during economic downturns. Remember, investing is a marathon, not a sprint. Staying focused on your long-term goals, avoiding impulsive decisions driven by short-term market fluctuations, and seeking professional financial advice can help you navigate the complexities of investing during a recession. Now, while recessions are often associated with economic hardship, it's essential to remember that they also create opportunities for innovation, growth, and positive change. Just as a forest fire clears out dead wood and allows new growth to flourish, recessions can pave the way for a more resilient and dynamic economy. During economic downturns, businesses are often forced to become more efficient, streamline operations, and find creative solutions to challenges. This can lead to increased productivity, innovation, and the emergence of new industries and business models. For investors, recessions can present opportunities to acquire assets at discounted prices, potentially generating attractive returns over the long term. Just as a savvy shopper looks for bargains during a sale, investors can use market downturns to their advantage by strategically deploying capital. Remember, the economy is cyclical, and periods of contraction are often followed by periods of expansion. By maintaining a long-term perspective, staying informed about emerging trends, and being prepared to seize opportunities, we can position ourselves for success in the post-recession world. In today's interconnected world, economic uncertainty is a constant companion. However, by arming ourselves with knowledge, understanding the forces shaping the economy, and developing sound financial habits, we can navigate the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Staying informed about economic indicators, monitoring market trends, and seeking expert advice can empower us to make informed decisions about our finances and investments. Remember, knowledge is power, and the more we understand about the economy, the better equipped we are to navigate its complexities. Just as a skilled navigator uses charts, compasses, and their knowledge of the sea to chart a course, we can use our financial literacy, sound judgment, and a long-term perspective to navigate the economic waters. Remember, while we cannot control the economic winds, we can adjust our sails and steer our financial ship towards a brighter future. By embracing a proactive, informed, and resilient approach, we can weather economic storms and emerge stronger on the other side. The economy might be in trouble soon. Some experts think a recession is coming in early 2025. That means the stock market could drop by 30% or even 50%. House prices could go down too. We need to be ready for tough times. It's like seeing a storm coming. You want to be prepared. We can't stop a recession if it's coming, but we can get ready for it. It's like packing a bag for a hurricane. You want to have the right things. In this video, we'll talk about what's happening in the economy. We'll learn about things like trade and inflation. We'll also talk about how to protect ourselves. The most important thing is to be informed. Let's talk about the trade deficit. The U.S. buys more from other countries than it sells. This difference is called a trade deficit. Right now, our trade deficit is huge. It's over $773 billion. That's a lot of money going out of the country. This can be a problem. It can lead to inflation. Inflation means prices go up. When we have a big trade deficit, it can make inflation worse. 
This is because we're sending a lot of money overseas. That weakens our dollar. A weak dollar makes things more expensive to buy. This can make life tough for everyone, especially people who are already struggling. Bernstein's Warning Richard Bernstein is an expert on the economy. He's worried about the trade deficit and says it could cause big problems. He thinks we need to make more things in America again. This process is called reindustrialization. Bernstein says it's important for our future, and he's not the only one who thinks so. Reindustrialization. A possible solution. Many experts believe reindustrialization is the answer. We need to bring back factories and jobs. This will help us reduce the trade deficit, create jobs, and boost the economy. It won't be easy, but it's important. We need to start making things in America again. This is the best way to fix the trade deficit, and it will help us build a stronger economy for the future. A world divided. The world is changing. Countries are starting to go their separate ways. This is called deglobalization. It means we're trading less with each other. This can be a problem for supply chains, which are how things get made and delivered. When countries don't trade as much, supply chains can break down. Think about it like this. Let's say you're making a car. The parts come from all over the world. If one country stops trading, you can't make the car. This is what's happening with deglobalization. Supply chains are getting disrupted. It's making it harder to get the things we need. And it's making prices go up. Ken Griffin is another expert on the economy. He's worried about deglobalization. He says it will make things more expensive for everyone and he thinks these higher prices could last for decades. This is a big deal. It means we could be paying more for everything, from food and gas to clothes and electronics. It's going to be tough on everyone's wallets. So what can we do about it? It's not going to be easy to fix. Deglobalization is a complex problem. It's going to take time and effort to rebuild supply chains. We need to find new ways to make things. We need to find new trading partners, and we need to be prepared for higher prices. It's not going to be easy, but we can get through it. There's been a lot of talk about bringing manufacturing back to the U.S. We are making more computer chips, electric cars, and solar panels here. Some companies are moving their factories back from overseas. This is good news for American workers. But is it enough? Some experts say no. They say, we need to do much more to rebuild our manufacturing base. We're still far behind where we used to be. In the 1950s and 1960s, America was a manufacturing powerhouse. We made everything from cars and airplanes to televisions and refrigerators. Those were the days of good-paying, blue-collar jobs. But things have changed a lot since then. Many factories have closed down and moved overseas. Millions of manufacturing jobs have been lost. Some experts believe we need to get back to those levels of manufacturing to avoid economic doom. The government has been trying to help the economy. They've been giving out a lot of money and stimulus. This includes things like housing assistance, welfare programs, and student loan forgiveness. This has helped to keep the economy afloat. But some experts worry that it's just a temporary fix. They argue that we're already in a recession. They say the stimulus is just masking the real problems. They believe we need to address the underlying issues in our economy. Masking the real issues. So, are we in a recession or not? It's hard to say for sure. The government says no, but, um, some experts disagree. They point to things like job losses, revised labor figures, and a rising unemployment rate. They say these are all signs of a recession. They believe the stimulus is just masking the true extent of the problem. They warn that we could be in for a rude awakening when the stimulus money runs out. Trouble in the East China's economy is facing some serious challenges. For years, China has been growing rapidly. It became the world's second largest economy. But now, things are slowing down. There are a number of reasons for this. One is the country's strict zero-COVID policy. This policy led to lockdowns and disruptions to businesses. It also hurt consumer spending. The housing bubble bursts. Another major problem is China's housing market. 
For years, China has experienced a massive real estate boom. Property prices skyrocketed and construction boomed. But this rapid growth wasn't sustainable. Many apartments were built but remain empty. People bought them as investments, not to live in. This created a housing bubble. And like all bubbles, it eventually burst. China's pain, America's problem. The economic relationship between China and the United States is one of the most significant in the world. The two countries are deeply intertwined through trade, investment, and finance. But what happens when one of these economic giants faces trouble? How does it impact the other? Today, we delve into the complexities of this relationship and explore the potential repercussions of China's economic pain on the United States. So, what does this mean for the United States? When China's economy experiences a downturn, the ripple effects can be felt across the globe, especially in the U.S. American businesses, consumers, and even the stock market can all be affected. Let's break down the various ways in which China's economic struggles could become America's problem. China is a major trading partner for the U.S. In fact, China is one of the largest exporters of goods to the United States. From electronics to clothing, a significant portion of the products we use daily are manufactured in China. This trade relationship has been beneficial for both countries, providing American consumers with affordable goods and creating jobs in both nations. We buy a lot of goods from China. The Made in China label is ubiquitous in American stores. This reliance on Chinese products means that any disruption in China's manufacturing sector can have a direct impact on the availability and prices of goods in the U.S. For example, if Chinese factories slow down production due to economic issues, American retailers may face shortages, leading to higher prices for consumers. If China's economy slows down, it could hurt the U.S. economy too. The stock markets in both countries are closely linked, and a downturn in China can lead to a decline in U.S. stock prices. Investors often react to news of economic troubles in China by selling off stocks, which can lead to market volatility and reduced investor confidence. This, in turn, can affect American businesses and their ability to raise capital. American companies that sell to China could see their sales decline. Many U.S. businesses rely on the Chinese market for a significant portion of their revenue. If Chinese consumers and businesses cut back on spending due to economic difficulties, American companies may experience a drop in sales. This can lead to lower profits, layoffs, and even business closures in the U.S. American consumers could also face higher prices for goods made in China. When China's economy weakens, it can lead to a devaluation of the Chinese currency, the yuan. A weaker yuan makes Chinese goods more expensive for American buyers. This means that everyday items, from electronics to clothing, could see price increases, putting a strain on American households. This is because a weaker Chinese economy could lead to a weaker Chinese currency. The value of the yuan is closely tied to the health of China's economy. When the economy slows down, the yuan often loses value. This devaluation can have a ripple effect on global markets, affecting exchange rates and trade balances. For the U.S., a weaker yuan means that American exports to China become more expensive, potentially reducing demand for U.S. goods. A weaker currency would make Chinese goods more expensive for American buyers. This price increase can lead to inflationary pressures in the U.S., as businesses pass on the higher cost to consumers. Additionally, American companies that rely on Chinese components for their products may face increased production costs, further contributing to price hikes. In summary, while China's economic pain may seem like a distant issue, its impact on the United States is very real and multifaceted. From higher prices for consumers to potential job losses and market volatility, the interconnectedness of our global economy means that what happens in China doesn't stay in China. It's a reminder of the importance of understanding and navigating the complexities of international economic relationships. Interconnected Economies The situation in China highlights how interconnected the global economy is. When one major economy experiences problems, it can have ripple effects around the world. 
The U.S. and China are closely linked through trade and investment. What happens in China doesn't stay in China. It can impact American businesses and consumers. This is why it's important to pay attention to what's happening in the global economy. It can have a direct impact on our lives. The illusion of success. Our world is full of screens. We watch TV, scroll through social media, and consume endless content. Every day we are bombarded with images and videos that paint a picture of what success looks like. These screens are not just passive devices. They actively shape our perceptions and aspirations. They tell us stories of success that are often far removed from reality. This constant stream of information can shape how we see the world, and it can create unrealistic expectations, especially for younger generations. Young people in particular are highly impressionable and are still in the process of forming their identities and understanding their place in the world. When they see these idealized versions of success, it can lead to feelings of inadequacy and pressure to conform to these unrealistic standards. Reality TV often shows a glamorous and effortless path to wealth. Social media influencers flaunt luxurious lifestyles and make it seem easy. They post pictures of exotic vacations, expensive cars, and designer clothes, all while maintaining a perfect appearance. This portrayal can be incredibly misleading. It suggests that success is easily attainable and that it comes without hard work or sacrifice. But this isn't the whole story. These curated images rarely show the hard work, setbacks, and sacrifices behind the scenes. The reality is that many influencers and celebrities work tirelessly to maintain their public image. They spend countless hours planning, creating, and editing content. They face constant scrutiny and pressure to stay relevant, and often they deal with personal struggles that are never shown to the public. The glamorous photos and videos are just the tip of the iceberg. The real story is much more complex and challenging. True success in any field requires dedication, perseverance, and resilience. It involves long hours, sleepless nights, and moments of doubt. It means facing failures and learning from them. It means making sacrifices and sometimes putting your dreams on hold. The path to success is rarely straightforward or easy. It is filled with obstacles and challenges that test your resolve and commitment. It's important to remember that success is not just about wealth and fame. It's about finding fulfillment and purpose in what you do. It's about building meaningful relationships and making a positive impact on the world. It's about personal growth and self-improvement. And sometimes it means stepping away from the screens and focusing on what truly matters in life. We need to redefine what success means to us. Instead of chasing after the illusion of success portrayed on screens, we should strive for a more authentic and fulfilling version of success, one that aligns with our values and brings us true happiness. This means setting realistic goals, celebrating small achievements, and appreciating the journey as much as the destination. Remember, success is a personal journey. It's not about comparing yourself to others or trying to live up to someone else's standards. It's about being the best version of yourself and pursuing your passions with dedication and integrity. So the next time you find yourself scrolling through social media or watching reality TV, take a moment to reflect on what success truly means to you. And don't be fooled by the illusion of success. The real success lies in the effort the growth, and the impact you make along the way. The real estate industry is a prime example. Shows about flipping houses or becoming a real estate mogul make it look exciting and highly profitable. While there's potential for success in real estate, the reality is far more nuanced and challenging than what is often portrayed on television. These shows tend to focus on the glamorous aspects, like the big profits and the beautiful homes, but they rarely delve into the nitty-gritty details that can make or break a real estate venture. It's not as simple as it appears on TV. The reality is that the real estate market is complex and unpredictable. It takes knowledge, skills, hard work, and sometimes a bit of luck to make it. Many challenges and potential pitfalls are often glossed over in these shows. For instance, the legal paperwork involved in buying or selling a property can be overwhelming and time-consuming.
There are also market fluctuations that can drastically affect property values, making it difficult to predict the best time to buy or sell. Additionally, unexpected repairs and maintenance costs can quickly eat into any potential profits. It's important to separate the entertainment aspect from the real-world complexities. One of the key elements often overlooked is the importance of thorough market research. Successful real estate investors spend a significant amount of time analyzing market trends, understanding the local economy, and identifying the best neighborhoods for investment. This involves studying various data points, such as employment rates, school quality, and future development plans, to make informed decisions. Without this critical research, even the most promising property can turn into a financial disaster. Negotiation skills are another crucial aspect that is frequently underrepresented in these shows. The ability to negotiate effectively can make a significant difference in the final purchase price and terms of a deal. This requires not only a deep understanding of the market, but also strong interpersonal skills to build rapport and trust with sellers, buyers, and other stakeholders. It's a delicate balance that can take years to master. Then there are the challenges of property management. Owning rental properties can be a steady source of income, but it also comes with its own set of headaches. Dealing with problematic tenants, ensuring timely maintenance, and navigating landlord-tenant laws are just a few of the issues that can arise. Renovations, which are often glamorized on TV, can also be fraught with unexpected problems from budget overruns to contractor delays. These are real-world issues that require practical solutions and a lot of patience. Financial planning and management are also critical components of successful real estate investing. It's not just about having the capital to buy properties. It's about managing that capital wisely. This includes budgeting for ongoing expenses, setting aside funds for emergencies, and planning for long-term financial goals. Working with financial advisors and accountants can provide valuable insights and help investors make sound financial decisions. Networking is another essential element that is often downplayed. Building a network of contacts in the real estate industry can open doors to new opportunities and provide support when challenges arise. This includes connecting with other investors, real estate agents, contractors, and even local government officials. A strong network can provide valuable advice, share market insights, and offer support during difficult times. While the potential for success in real estate is real, it's important to approach it with a clear understanding of the challenges and complexities involved. It's not just about the big wins and the beautiful homes. It's about the hard work, dedication, and resilience required to navigate the ups and downs of the market. By separating the entertainment aspect from the real-world complexities, aspiring investors can set themselves up for long-term success and truly enjoy the rewards of their efforts, setting realistic expectations. Whether you're pursuing a career, starting a business, or investing, it's crucial to have realistic expectations. Success rarely happens overnight. It usually involves hard work, dedication, and perseverance over an extended period. Don't be discouraged if you don't see immediate results. It's essential to stay focused on your goals and continue learning and growing. Remember, everyone's journey is different. Comparing yourself to others, especially those portrayed in the media, can be disheartening and counterproductive. The power of perseverance. One of the most important qualities for success is perseverance. There will be obstacles and setbacks along the way. It's how you respond to these challenges that will determine your success. Don't give up easily. Learn from your mistakes, adapt, and keep moving forward. Remember, success is not a straight line. It's a journey with twists and turns. Stay focused on your goals, be prepared to work hard, and never underestimate the power of perseverance. Weathering the economic storm. We've talked about some big challenges facing the economy things like trade deficits, inflation, and deglobalization. We've also seen how China's economic troubles could affect us all. It can seem overwhelming. But remember, we can't control everything. What we can control is how we prepare. 
Just like a captain prepares his ship for a storm, we need to prepare ourselves for economic uncertainty. We need to be informed, make smart decisions, and be ready to weather the storm. Charting your course. It's easy to get caught up in the hype of reality TV and social media. They often paint an unrealistic picture of success. Don't let that discourage you. Remember, everyone's journey is unique. Success takes time, effort, and dedication. It's not about instant gratification or overnight riches. It's about setting realistic goals, working hard, and never giving up on your dream. 